Welcome to Customizing BricsCAD. My name is Ralph Grabowski, and it's my pleasure to show you how to make BricsCAD work the way you work. You are probably familiar with the array command that lets you uh, make multiple copies in, in patterns. And here I'm, for example, drawing the polar array. And we're gonna make four copies centered around this spot. But what if we want to change the array? Say we want to have five copies or uh, change the angle. Well, you'd have to erase that and start over again. Fortunately, BricsCAD has a better way. I'm going to repeat what I just did, but using a new command in BricsCAD, and that's called the Polar Array command. Now, it is different from the array command in that there is no dialog box. It all operates at the command line. It's prompting me to select the entity, so I'm going to select this block, and I'm done with that. And it wants me to pick a center point, so I'll pick one, say, here. And now it's uh, instantly created the array. If you don't like what you see there, then you continue at the command line to change things. For example, I'm going to enter in the items option. I type the letter I, press enter, and say I want four or I can change that to, let's take a bigger number, 20. And that's quite a pretty pattern, isn't it? Now, it'll also change the angle between each item. So uh, let's type in A for angle. And right now the angle is 18. Uh, what happens if we put in, say, half that number, nine? Now there's still the same number of items, which is 20, but they have a smaller angle between them, which gives you a partial polar array. Okay, let's change the angle back to 18. And there we are back again. So you can see how it's very interactive. You can fine tune the array until it is what you want. Change number of items back to say five. And all this is possible because the array is associative. You can turn off the associativity with the uh, associative option, yes or no, but obviously we want it to stay associative so we can make these changes. In addition to a single uh, polar array like that, you can have multiple ones and that's where the row option comes in. So right now there's just one row. Let's put in three and uh, there you can see there what that looks like. And uh, we're getting some pretty nice starburst patterns here out of that north symbol. There is a levels option and that's for a 3D array. So let's make it for three and a hundred feet between each one. And I'm going to exit the command. Let's uh, take a look at it in the 3D. You can see that it's a 3D array now. The command for creating rectangular associative arrays is somewhat similar, so I'm going to show you quite a different one. It's called the array path command. Now, like before, it all operates on the command line. It's asking me to select entity to array, so I pick the block and then a path curve, so I've pre-drawn this spline, and there you go. Now you can, of course, uh, now change all these things. When you change the number of items, it uses the same system as the measure and distance command, so you can either specify distance between items or the total number of items along the path. So right here we have, uh, let's change that to 20 feet. And now they're a lot closer. Number of items, so let's say 10. And now it's a lot shorter because the distance between each one is quite short. Uh, similarly, you can have the rows where you have uh, multiple versions of it, but they're all bunched up because they're going along this curve and the curve is created much like the offset command, as well as levels for doing a 3D version. What's a bit different from array polar is that how you align them. I'm gonna enter in the A option for align along the path, yes or no. I'm gonna say yes and now they uh, align themselves, changing direction as the path changes. Another one is tangent direction. This one can be a bit difficult to understand. I'm gonna enter in the default, which is normal, and they seem to have disappeared when I see those lines. Well, what it actually is, is normal means in the Z direction. Okay, so once you've drawn your associative array and it's uh, here a few commands later, can you change that associative array? Well, certainly you can. And it's very simple. All you need to do is double click it and the array edit command starts up. So for example, we've got three levels. Well, let's change the levels back to one. Now back to looking at the top view, uh, you can change things like the fill angle, the angle between items and so on, but there's a far more interesting 
one. I'm going to draw a little circle here, a little red circle. And I'm going to go back into the array edit command, double click. And there's this replace option. So I'm going to type in REP, abbreviation for replace. And it's asking for the replacement objects. So I'll select the circle, press enter. The base point, default centroid, so I'll press enter there. Now select an item in the array to replace. So I'm going to pick one, two, three, four. Now nothing has happened yet. I'll press enter. Magic, they're replaced by those circles. Once again, they're part of the array, so I can, uh, so I'm going to change the uh, angle between items. Let's say change it to uh, 26 instead of 36. And when I press enter, uh, the uh, circles are still there. I trust you enjoyed learning how to make BricsCAD work the way you work. For more on customizing BricsCAD, check out the ebook. Download the free trial version of BricsCAD at www.brixis.com and check it out for yourself.